early on in my approach to this movie, there was just certain areas that stuck out to me as, as problematic when, when sort of con starting to you know, come up with concepts for them. And one of them was hell. The original script hell is of black void and it was like the, the ground was like an oil slick and there were some bones lying around. I thought, you know, that's all been kind of done before. What would make it more relatable? And I thought, because I'm approaching everything in a sort of a realistic way, it'd be really interesting to give a real geography to hell. Francis had done a lot of visual homework to really set up what he wanted. He'd show me pictures, he had a lot of references. He wanted hell to be a freeway from the get-go. There's also a little bit of a joke of, you know, the LA freeway system being hell. I had an idea early on about what I thought hell should look like. And in one of my first meetings with Francis and Naomi Shohan, I suggested that hell look like that moment when the heat wave from the nuclear blast hits everything just before the shock wave, which blows it all apart. And when the heat wave hits, it, things stream off violently. They melt, they catch fire, they, they start to blow apart, but they aren't really disintegrating until the shock wave hits. And I said, maybe hell is that moment during a nuclear blast, but it lasts forever. And I thought that was just great. I mean, that just kind of finished it all off. So you just have this insane, super directional wind. We had videos of nuclear tests, the ones that they did in White Sands. We also had a videotape from um, a place that researches decomposition of bodies. So we looked at decay and destruction. Naomi started working on design sketches for what hell might look like. And in the end, we came up with the hell that you're going to see in the movie. By the time that we um, started working with Mike and Francis, the, a lot of the conceptual work had been done for the Hell Freeway. They'd done um, storyboards and illustrations and even some animatic work. The developmental work that we were doing was more in taking these uh, illustrations, you know, like the key art that we've seen, into the three-dimensional world. To create the hell environment, we used uh, at virtually every trick in the book. The Hell Freeway set was actually pretty cool. The uh, production designer and art department did a fantastic job of filling an entire stage with a, a recreation of a freeway that had been destroyed as if in an earthquake. And also a lot of cars that are sort of in this process of erosion. Despite the size of this set, this is a very small part of the environment. We are creating the entire city of Los Angeles as if it were in hell. In this film, hell is essentially a parallel universe. And we're trying to stay true to Los Angeles. So we would start with these photographic pictures of Keanu walking down a freeway with a lot of wind on him, and we started building all that um, in the computer. Everything you see that's here, all the cars, whatever you're looking at, will actually be replaced by CG objects because as the wind blows, all of this erodes. The husks of cars that have gotten so light and it's so eroded are blowing through the air like tumbleweeds. So the art department had one row of a gigantic Ritter fans, fans like six foot diameter blades, just constantly blowing. Originally the plan was to put a lot of Fuller's Earth or like dirt in the air so that the scene would be really thick atmospherically, but for a lot of reasons, health being one of the more foremost, we weren't able to do that. So we ended up putting all that stuff in digitally as well. A lot of particle animation to create hell. We rendered huge amounts of volumetric debris. They're not just two-dimensional layers of smoke. When they hit things, they wrap around them, they, they have eddy currents. This is all the airborne detritus. Uh, flakes of metal, debris flying through the air, a lot of dust, a lot of fire. I think we ended up with something like eight different types of hell atmosphere. We had uh, a really, really uh, pretty dense environment. From there, we take all those elements, we start packaging them together in the compositing stage. And we also add a lot of things like heat distortion or sometimes throw some of the elements out of focus to simulate a camera's depth of field, um, add flashes and light and lighting effects, uh, just put all the elements it takes to create a hell shot together. I just pulled a soldier demon out of a little girl. Looked like he was trying to come through. I think the inspiration for the demons in hell uh, came from some photographs that we had seen of cadavers that had been through autopsy, where we had seen these remains of these human beings, which essentially had no brains. And I just thought, wow, this is like, there's something really insane about these things, 
you know, not having a brain, not having a soul, really something really empty about and sort of scary about that. And I just thought that that was really kind of a cool, weird approach to these kind of, you know, automatons. We want the demons in hell to not just be frightening, we want them to appear to have a lot of weakness. We wanted them to seem almost like they weren't smart enough to know anything except they had to devour humans who came to hell. Um, and they were sort of pathetic about the way they went about it. You know, they had to do it in groups and they were kind of sad looking. So they all have really bad sort of curvature of the spine and they're all really skinny with these really bloated bellies. With the help of the guys at Stan Winston studio, uh, we set about designing the, the creatures for the movie. And uh, Stan's guys built a puppet of one of these creatures, which was used in a, a couple of the shots. They did a great job. And the detail that they brought in was just amazing. Every other shot in hell or anywhere else where these demons appear, the demons are uh, computer graphic. With the scavengers, um, what we needed to happen was for it to start off relatively slowly, like the creatures are stalking Keanu um, at the very beginning, and then for it to progress into this crescendo at the end where it's this mad chaos. Because they don't have eyes, we had to use other senses, like their sense of smell and also their sense of touch. So we have them you know, sniffing the air. That also helped us develop the, uh, the personality of, of these creatures. Close your eyes. Why? We created another species of demon called cephalobites. Every single scene of a cephalite in the movie is computer generated. Uh, they actually only appear in one particular attack sequence in the film, and it was great fun creating the sequence. The inspiration for these characters came from a bar I went into in Yugoslavia, and we were given drinks in stemware with the stems broken off. So you had to finish your drink and you couldn't set it down, which is a particular kind of hell of its own. And so we had the, these creatures, and I said, well, you know, if they had no legs, then they would just be destined, determined, they always have to stay in the air. These poor guys could never land. The design of the Sepovite's wings is, is very much like a bat's. Um, so we did uh, do a lot of research into how bats fly, their motion. The general drive of the attack is that they never quite get in there. Um, they're completely disintegrated. So we had a lot of discussions because there's been disintegrations done in movies before and we really wanted to make sure that this was new and interesting. Imagining a real creature being completely dissolved away, there's a lot of stuff involved there. Um, and without getting disgusting, you want to have that kind of stuff show up. You want to see that density and mass. We talked about the wing panels and how they would dissolve differently because they're these very thin, leathery kinds of things, as opposed to the wing bones and wing structures, and then compare that to the bodies. And you can do kind of interesting things with having dust blow through those areas and, and how they dissolve and trying to make it fun and interesting. This is the sign of Mammon. Initially, Mammon had a very, very brief appearance in the film. The Stan Winston guys built uh, a mammon puppet because all we had to do was just a little shock cut. And then it turned out his part grew because his performance was so good, I suppose. Francis liked the idea of mammon and what we could do with him. So we created mammon in CG at Tippett Studios. And he walks into a scene in hydrotherapy hell and then we see him later through the skin of Rachel, but much more pronounced and much more clearly than we'd ever anticipated. Get out! Get out! So he wound up with a bigger part. And I understand his agent is negotiating for more money right now, I'm not sure. Mammon was a, a really interesting character, beautifully designed. Right off the bat, you notice that he has this real sense of evilness to him. He has these two big club feet. He has a gammy eye, it's like it's been fused over. He has this one bulbous eye, and also he's, he's very pale and emaciated, but he just has this real presence of being extremely evil. Francis wanted him to look frightening, but not overpowering. Um, definitely like a son, you know, the child of Satan, um, but certainly big enough and strong enough and, and evil enough to carry the day. 
In the one shot where um, Mammon is actually um, coming towards Angela, we needed the start of the shot to, to seem almost non-assuming, you know, and for the tension and the drama to build throughout the shot. So there were many ways that we could, we could actually incorporate that. Um, his motion at the beginning of the sequence was a little bit gimp-like, he's, he's more hunched over, and then as he comes closer and closer to Angela, we were building up the tension with the camera continually tilting upwards. At the same time, you know, we have his body flexing, we have these controls where his veins and his tendons on his body are actually increasing throughout the shot. So all of these uh, little visual cues helped with that sense of, you know, tension. And then right at the very end, there's the big punch. Filming can be hell at times. Um, you know, I wish I can say we had like a really funny story while we were shooting in hell. Even though it's kind of a complex, really super effects filled sequence, it was actually one of the easier and simpler things to shoot for some reason. Hell is the one thing that's got to really work. If it doesn't work, you kind of blow the whole, the whole game. And it's the one thing where you could really fail. So hell was kind of a real hot point. I didn't come to this movie with many preconceived notions of hell. Maybe because I'm Jewish, I'm not so sure. But the traditional images of hell, which are flames and fire and brimstone and those kinds of things, only to me meant that hell was a very violent place. And I wanted to make hell a violent place, a place that was scary and nasty, not some place you would ever want to spend any time at all. <laughs>